good work tips on scarf joint. I like using scarf joint. It's nice to send two pieces of timber and get a strong joint. So once I've cut that, I'll put two wedges in and I'll tap them in so it tights against each other. And then I'll put a screw in each end just to finish it and tie it off. Now this is how I do it. The width times three. So we've got 220 on the width. So we've got 660 long, but I'll square through. So nine inch, 27 inches long. Once I've squared that through, I'll find a piece of timber, which is the same size as my wedges. Usually a bit of four by two off cut. And then I'll put that like so on the edge. Now it's always from the square line in. So square line in and it's the same the other side, so it always works in. Now you can draw a line either side, but sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. So what I tend to do is just go from the halfway line just over, mark back one side, do the same but on the other side, like so. And you can go into a little bit of depth and take time to work out exactly where the centre is. Um, as when you measure across halfway and square it, one side always works bigger than the other. But without complicating it, just keep it nice and simple. Measure halfway across, square it across, and then when you've done so, just lay it on top of the other timber. I always pin it with a nail to hold it in place that moves when I'm doing it on my own, and I it through or put a line through to get those two timbers right. And then I just draw around it, describe it in. And the one side that is usually bigger than the other, I just take 20 mil off or so. If I take that three quarters of an inch off, that's your wedge. And it keeps it nice and simple. And that's how you do it. Good work. Good work tips doing curved dormers. First thing I'll do is find out is it going to be copper, is it going to be lead, a GRP, what is the detail? So I need to know how that finishes with regards to the dormer cheeks. This is going to be straight down. So what I've done is I've worked the width of my dorms out and they want full semicircles. So we've worked that out apply with compass, string compass, uh, got the curve. Now I've done this to the thickness of the dormer walls. So when this sits on the dormer walls, that will go all the way around and be flush with the dormer cheeks. And then we've probably got three layers on the roof, which will be another video itself. But I work this out as 150 mil. Uh, I rip these down to 75 mil and I slide this in. There's a lot of people who do this where they put noggins in or they sit the, the timber on top all the way around. I like sitting it in. Uh, and then with the off cuts, I use just noggins underneath which would pick up the plasterboard, but it also will strengthen this up. So the top half will go on to, onto the top, the second half will go onto the bottom. I will also, my cheek, Upright, so again. Good work tips for doing curved dormers. Now you've got a couple of different ways of doing this. One, I'm going to illustrate how we get the curve of the ply. So once I've run them all through, we sit them in the slots and a second noggin down to hold it all nice and sturdy. I will mark the bottom and I'll mark the top of a whole full sheet of ply. Now when I lay that down, you'll have a top and a bottom point at each rafter. Now, to get that curve, it doesn't work like a, like a semicircle. So depending on the pitch, it's more of an egg shape. So what we do is we're putting out the top and the bottom of each section of that rafter. And then we get a rip of timber and we put it where the nails are and draw around it, top and bottom. But what you've got to take into consideration is the thickness of this ply stick back in and this ceiling line needs to run through. So you would either back cut it, like say 45 for example, or when you ping this through, the bottom one you will lift up 18mm thickness of the ply. So then you'll put an extra nail in and you'll do that on every point in the nails and you get a nice line and that's how you get your curve. Also, you've got a couple of ways of doing this, you can either do a bulkhead, if, depending on the weight. This is quite light, so I'm not too concerned. So if this was heavier, I would do my bulkhead double going through onto my triple rafters, like so. So that goes through there with a nine two. Now I want to create this curve. So it's stepped down, but it would be a curved bulkhead. So you do one go across, you do one in the middle, and then you do another one at the bottom and the top, either side of the middle one, that will create the curve. What we've done is done it so it goes straight through. 
and we'll just notch it out, follow it right through, cut it with them lines. We've got six or two at the top, which go through to take some of the weight. And we'll also infill it on the outside with timber, ready for the roof if it's got something to fix to. So if you look at the one next door, that is how we've done it. Good work tips for doing curved dormers. Once we've got our template and everything's cut, you'll see that we've got the notch at the bottom. We'll put our plate on top of our double plate for dormer cheek. That way, we've got something tight to go against. It ties it all in nice. What I like to do is when I'm doing that, is square through of where my uprights are going to be, and then we'll cut a knob in between on the inside. Now that way you can screw through and that hold everything balanced um, as you work across. Also a good work tip is we want open plan here. So what we do is we level across from the underside of the curve and we mark it on our triple rafters and then we measure the thickness, which ours will be 100 mil back, double nine by two. So that would be our trimmer cut through. Sample over here. As you can see, we've done so here. Now what we've done is we've put a piece of timber on top and we've put all the timbers across into that. That way we can mark that and we can cut the curve to suit that shape. Or you can get a pencil on a bit of timber and you can go with the shape all the way around on the inside. And then from the top, you can do so. Even if you get key points. Good work tips. Good work tips doing the tabletop roof. There's a couple of good ways of working this out, but what I would do is find a right angle corner and I'll lay my rafter down. That way I can work out with my timbers where exactly my trimmers are, double plates, top and bottom, and size of my stud walls. I can also, from that position, measure out from my seat cut, my first mount, to where my plumb cut is going to be on my rafter, all from this corner. And once we've set this out on the floor, what I'm aiming to get is where the plumb cut comes down and touches the floor. So like I say, you can work out from the corner, you work it out from apps, various different ways and methods, but that's how I like to do it, traditional ways. And then once I've done that, I will measure in from the corner, out, both corners, and then I'll do the same the other end. The distance in between is what the tabletop's going to be. But a very good way that I've been, been shown by a master carpenter, what he would do is, is we get the measurements from each side and ping a line through. And then we do that in four different directions, and that gives you an accurate of exactly the position of where that is. And the good thing is about doing it that method is as where we've got these walls and We've got to put in the walls where they are because you're governed by the dot and dab and the plasterboard lines. So that might not be central of the roof, so that's irrelevant. So by pinging these lines, you can measure to your wall to find out exactly where your tabletop is going to go. You do that from each side, you can mark that the tabletop you make it the floor, and then when you've got it up the top, a little jiggery in around with the rafters, and that should be close as you're going to get it. Good work tips, tabletop roof. Good work tips, cutting jack rafters. There's a couple of good tips that I like. One, when this runs right through in the raft that goes to the centre point, everything works to the centre point. Now that works with tray or whatever detail that you've got. Now sometimes, you're trying to get these marked out, if you're measuring off a rafter and you've got your point, let's say 400 centres, you're not measuring it to that point, you're measuring it to that point. So once I've got that plumb cut and I know how far to come down there, then when I mark this out, I would also have my parallel across that way, makes it easy. So I'd hold it at the end where I've cut the plumb cut. I'd run my tape through, pencil or my thumbnail line, and then measure down, and that would give me my mark. So that's how we do that. But if I've got a low cut and I'm doing two sides, and these are ready cut, now I've got to cut the plumb cut off this. And if I'm working on my own, I've got to try and hold my tape on that. So I push hard with my tape into the, into that cut and then that will work and then I can mark my plumb cut at the other end or I just get my handsaw, do a tiny little cut into it and that way my 
any of my tapes sit in there and I can do all these on my own quite comfortably and easily. Also, a good work tip is if I'm struggling with timbers and holding it up, I would just do two things. I'd either get it started, like so, I use my hands up to my foot in position. And the other thing I'd do, put a nail at the back, so when I'm holding that in there on my jack rafter, I can slide it in at that point until it meets and my hands are more free to nail it up. Good work tips. Curved dormers. Instead of having a curved bulkhead, we've run it straight through for the ceiling line. Notched the plies, so the timbers sit in the notches. And then the off cuts of the timber, we use underneath for the noggins to make it nice and strong. Good work tips when you're doing firm pieces. Now, we like to leave our rafters set up so we can cut our foam pieces for a good size and that gives airflow. Then we can have a cold deck roof rather than a warm roof. Um, so what we do is when we set our rafters round, we use a block to the same all the way round. And the reason why we like to cut our foam pieces all the way through, especially in a big roof, because it spreads all the water evenly to all the gutters. But even more so is how that finishes for the roof tiler. They all finish the same round point. I see a lot of people doing them in either one direction or two direction, but you've got to think about how they dress that with the tiles. This way, it's the same and it's a good finish. Um, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can work to the corner, put your firm piece in from the corner and work away. I like to work it as a 45. So half my width, half out like I would if it was a hip roof. Um, that way, they go where they go. A um, couple of good ways of working these firm pieces out. Instead of getting firm pieces and cutting them all and having a lot of waste, find the centre point, I will cut one. Put that where I need to go, half my width, half my width out, like a hip, put that in. Then, once I've got that, I can put this in, in line of where that's got to go to the centre. When I know where that's going, I can use an off cut of timber, hold that at that very end and to my highest point, and then mark on my timber and cut that. Now once I've got that hip in, all my timbers will just go off that point. I've really got my angles at that, and I've got my measurements and that to do the size. Good work tips for doing that. Tips. Doing a bird's mouth, we sit it in tight to a set base, which is a power pit. So it's completely different to usual stand rafters on a plate. I still mark that on as I would normally, with my one third depth, with my one third bird's mouth out. And once I've got my seat cut, my plumb cut, I cut off like so. And when I do this plate at the bottom, I make sure it's cut onto a joist. I run another one across the top, so I stagger the joints and I like to fix a backing board on it. So it's nice and tight, it takes all the twist out. And if you can get it in line, so when it runs down the rafter, I can touch the back, it helps set it out in various places, like hips, for example. When I am doing this, and I do it like that, I like to make sure that my four by two, the top one of the timber tech, through the back of the two into the four by two, and then you can fix the four by two down, it makes everything nice and solid, and it ties it all in. Good work tips for doing rafters. In filling around the hip, first thing I do is get two rafters in at the very bottom. This is the bottom that you'll notice the most with the twist. So you can work from the start and as you come down, you'll notice the twist. So get them right, 
get hit in square and in line. Um, then I mark all the bottoms, and then I'll go along and I put a now in like so. I measure up to the top of where it's got to go, with all the measurements. I do that on all of them. Then I'd mark my bevel cut, my plumb cut on all of them. Then I'd get my square edge cut, my bird's mouth, and then I'd change it to the setting I need for the angle for the hip, and then I'd cut all them. And then what I'd do is have all four of them, what I need for one side. Then I'd do the other side with the off cuts, and gradually work up good work tips. Good work tips on hips, box cutter, or any, any sort of hips really. But illustrated here where we've got a box cutter, Got a hard base going round. Make some dummy little rafters, and then you put your lines through to make sure your edge is right. You can cut the bottoms of your hips and the tops of your hips, fix them like so, ping a line through, and then instead of trying to measure them in one big long one, once you've got the angles right and they're straight and in line, you could just measure from the little cut at the bottom and the top, and it makes it very easy to do so. One way of doing hips.